I want you to understand that when you are constantly responding to life, you're not actually ever making any progress. You're not actually ever reaching your next level, whether it's your next level of income, your next level in business, your next level as you're climbing up that corporate ladder, your next level in romance. When you are only responding to life, you're not actually changing anything. In today's episode, we are talking about segment intending. We're talking about setting intentions. We're talking about what it means to pre-pave energy. And ultimately, we're talking about what it really means to be the creator of your reality, what it really means to be a manifester, and how I like to say what it really means to have the receiver's mindset. So the woman with the receiver's mindset is constantly arguing for her desires, right? She's setting intentions of what she wants to allow in, what she's ready to create, what she's ready to experience. I'm ready to be paid more money. I'm ready to have an amazing relationship. I'm ready to have better friendships. I'm ready to drive a new car. She's thinking about what she's ready to experience in her life and she's taking action every single day to shift her thoughts, her energy, her focus, and her attention in alignment so that those things are in alignment with what she desires, which ultimately allows those desires to manifest in her physical reality. And then she keeps thinking those positive thoughts. She keeps focusing in positive ways. She keeps clearing out space until she's built out the belief system that normalizes her having her desires, right? Really quick. There's a difference between I manifested a hundred dollars and I am the woman who always has $10,000 in a nest egg. I always have $10,000 in a nest egg. Does not matter what's going on in the world. I always have $10,000 in a nest egg. If there's a little emergency or a big emergency and that $10,000 gets to be used for something, immediately $10,000 gets replenished because I am the woman who always has $10,000 in a nest egg. That's a belief system. That's a vibration. That's a lifestyle versus I just manifested $10,000 and now it's gone. And now I'm going to manifest $10,000 again. And now it's gone. And now I'm going to manifest $10,000 again. And now it's gone, right? There's a difference between manifesting a thing and manifesting a lifestyle. I'm manifesting the car of my desire. Great, I got the car of my desire. Now I'm manifesting another car of my desire versus being the woman who always has the car that she wants. I always get the car that I want. I'm deeply supported by money. I receive and experience the best of the best that the world has to offer. I always drive the car of my desire, right? There's a difference between getting a thing and shifting your lifestyle. So pause, we gotta take it all back. We gotta start at the very beginning First, I have to tell you who I am. For those of you that don't know, my name is Natalie Hughes. I'm a life mindset and manifestation coach in my business, on my platform, and in this podcast. My job is to support you, professional women, in co-creating emotionally fulfilled and purpose-driven lives for yourself. Whether you're an entrepreneur, you're an artist wanting to get your talents out there, wanting to get more bookings, wanting to be seen, wanting to be recognized, whether you are ready to climb up that corporate ladder because you know that your destiny is in that C-suite. You know that you were born to be in that C-suite, to be making changes at your company, leading in your industry. That's who you are. That's the dream that's been put on your heart. If you want to do all of those things and you want to get married, you don't just want to marry the first mf that comes to your life and gives you a ring. You want to be married to your soulmate, the love of your life, a man who sees you and loves you and knows you and supports you and pours into you, a man who you're going to co-create the rest of your lives with, living in harmony, having a family, raising up children who are emotionally safe, secure, nurtured, and protected financially, 
safe, secure, nurtured, and protected, obviously. If that's who you are, if that's what you feel called to, this is the podcast for you. All right, so let's dive deeper into this. What we started this episode talking about was if you are constantly responding to life, you're not actually changing a damn thing. Why is that? What does that mean, Matthews? I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. Your vibration, your dominant vibration, that means the feeling that you feel dominantly is what is being reflected back to you in your physical reality. Your belief systems, what is a belief? A belief is a thought that you think over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Your belief system, the beliefs that you hold, the thoughts that you're thinking all the fucking time, those are actually being thought by your subconscious mind. If you think a thought long enough that it becomes a belief, your subconscious mind then takes over and is like, oh yeah, I know what we're doing. I know what we're doing. I got this because your brain wants to be efficient. So if you think I am supported by money and money loves to come to me enough times, your brain will go, okay, okay, okay. You don't have to keep doing this. I got it. We're supported by money. Money loves to come to us. We're supported by money. Money loves to come to us. See, it, it's going all the time, 24 seven. Don't worry about it. Use your conscious energy to do something else. We've got this. So your subconscious mind is telling stories all day, every day, all day, every day about who you are and what you get to have and how you get to be treated and what goes on for you, how life gets to be for you. All the time, 24-7, subconscious mind, just going, 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 right? So you've got beliefs that are going on autopilot in your subconscious mind. And that is what is making up your dominant vibration, right? So the beliefs that are going on in your subconscious mind the shit that is making up your dominant vibration is attracting people, places, things, situations, and circumstances into your life on autopilot. The thoughts are going on autopilot. The things are being attracted into your world on autopilot. So let's do a scenario, right? The scenario is... Oh my God, there's a big drama that has gone on in your life. Ooh, bitch, I'll give a real example. No. <laughs> I, I'm like, oh my God, I was not preparing for a moment of vulnerability. That's fine, that's fine. It's the Naked and Noisy podcast. So we do vulnerability and openness and rawness and authenticity here, okay? Okay, let's get it, let's get into it. I had an experience years ago where there was always fucking drama. Always drama in my life. I had a one friend in particular who was always experiencing fucking drama. And so she would come into my life and she would come over to my house and she would talk about the fucked up things going on with her brother and the fucked up things going on with her mother. And then the fucked up things going on with her aunt. And then she had a baby. So then it was the fucked up things that were going on with her baby's father. Just fucked up things happening to her all of the time. She comes into my life bringing all of that fucked up energy. And I'm focusing on her. And what you focus on grows and expands. What you focus on, you get more of. Your focus creates, your thoughts create. So I'm focusing on her and her fucked up life. Now, drama starts manifesting in my life. Fucked up shit starts happening in my life. What's going on? I don't do this. This isn't me. This isn't how I live. What's going on? So what do I do? I respond to what's happening in my world. I cut her off. I respond to life. I cut that friend out of my life. 
Now I cut, I cut her out of my life for a lot of different reasons, but that was a really big one. That was like reason number one. You got too much fucking drama. I'm living a peaceful life. Yo ass gotta go. So that happened because I'm committed to living a peaceful life because I actually care about how I feel. Manifestation, you have to care about how you feel. We'll get more on that later. You have to really care about how you feel because you have to, just kidding, we'll get more into it now, I guess. You have to really care about how you feel because you have to commit to creating a better life for yourself. You have to commit to thinking new fucking thoughts. And do you know what's gonna motivate you to co continue thinking new thoughts? Do you know what's gonna motivate you to get that ass up and bust that journal fucking open and uncover the thoughts in your subconscious mind and debunk those limiting ass fucking beliefs and tell a new fucking story? Do you know what that motivation's gonna be? What's going to motivate you is the fucked up shit happening in your reality. What's going to motivate you is the dissatisfying, unsatisfying bullshit going on in your fucking bank accounts. What's going to satisfy you is the lack of vacations. What's going to satisfy you is the lack of first class airplane tickets that you're purchasing. Are you feeling me? Are you understanding me? I was traveling across the country multiple times in 2020 and I think 2021 no just 2020 2020 yes 2020 I traveled up and down the west coast across the United States multiple times I traveled so fucking much in 2020 amazing wonderful when I got done traveling because I totaled my car <laughs> in an accident so when I got done traveling I said I'm never doing this shit again why? Because after you sit in a car and drive for seven hours straight, your ass hurts. <laughs> I said, I'm never doing this shit again. Because I was traveling and I would stay in a city for a couple of days, two, three days. I'm not really seeing the city. I'm not really exploring the city. I'm not really doing anything in the city. I'm there for a couple of days. Once my energy finally gets comfortable and I'm more acclimated and I kind of know where things are, oop, time to go to another place. I didn't have the money to get a nice hotel and to be comfortable for a week's time. So what, what happened? When I got done traveling, I said, bitch, I'm done. I'm done. And personally, I was made to live and experience the best of the best. That's who I am. That's what I was created to do. That's what I was created to experience. I remember I went on a, I went on a trip to New Orleans in 2019. All of this is going to come together. I promise. I went on a trip to New Orleans in 2019 and I maxed out a credit card to go on this trip. Right. And that's not a, it's not a super relevant part of the story, but it is relevant because Yes, the hotel that I stayed at was what basically maxed out the card and it honestly was fucking worth it because the hotel that I stayed at was super amazing. Um, but I got a cheap ass flight. I don't remember if it was Spirit Airlines. It really could have been Spirit Airlines. So I get onto the plane. The plane is fucking old. Not only is the plane old, that's not the only thing that's wrong with the plane. When I say old, I mean like, there's no fucking in-flight entertainment. <laughs> There's no movies on this. <laughs> and if we're women who give a fuck about how we feel, these are the conversations that we have to have. Yes, there are some things that I'm too good for. I'm too good for a flight across the fucking country for hours and hours and hours, and I cannot watch a fucking movie if I want to. I'm too good for it. Don't give a fuck. You don't think you're too good for it? Enjoy. More seats for you. Like... <laughs> I don't really give a fuck, but me, a bitch like me, I need to, I need to watch a movie. A bitch like me needs to be entertained. Okay. I need to be able to click on the fucking screen and see exactly where I am flying over the sea or flying over the fucking States. I need to look at the map and I need to look at all the places in the world and say, hmm, maybe I want to travel to this country. What's going on over here? That's actually really how I learned like geography and shit. Like I knew the continents and like all that stuff, but 
you know, I really learned a lot. And even like traveling, driving through the States, I'm like, wow, like, no, I really, I know where things are because I like drove it. Anyway, that's not the point. That's not the point. Focus, 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 focus. So I'm on this old ass plane, right? And I swear to God, I kid you not. Something is biting me. Something is biting me. I don't know what it is. There's something biting me. I don't know if it's a fucking trick of the mind. Bitch, it was not a trick of the mind. There's something fucking biting me. There's multiple things fucking biting me. It felt like there were little tiny insects on the fucking floor in the seats. And it felt like they were jumping up like the fucking... Like, like what? Like, 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 you know, Rice Krispie Treats, how they like snap, crackle and pop. <laughs> like if a noise could describe the way that it felt like these things were jumping up and biting me. Bitch, I sat there for hours. No idea how long I have to be on this flight for because there's no fucking screen telling me how long I have to be on this flight for. <laughs> the worst experience of my life I was struggling <laughs> I hated that experience a not so friend of mine at the time later was like um giving me shit she was like you went on this trip to New Orleans and you complained about the flight bitch um yeah um yes the fuck I did you think it's okay bed bugs on the fucking plane You've heard of snakes on a plane. Now get ready for something even more terrifying. <laughs> something even more terrifying. What the fuck? Microscopic bugs? And I'm wearing shorts? Like, no. Hell no. So what is the conclusion that you're coming to? I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't live like this. I can't live my life when I want to travel to places, when I want to go to Tennessee. I'm driving six, seven hours every single day from state to state. Now, there were great times, right? There were fun adventures and amazing things. So grateful that I did it, blah, blah, blah. Learned so much. Civil rights, like it was so good. Like it was so good in so many ways, right? But in the ways that it was not good, it was not good. I don't regret it. But after I finished my final like road trip across the country, I was flying back to California because I had totaled my car. So I was flying back to California and I said, bitch, this is it. This is all that there is for me. Bitch, like me needs to be on a flight and I don't need to just be on any flight. I need to be comfortable. Bitch, like me needs leg room and a window seat because I like it. Bitch, like me needs to be cozy, like Beyonce said. You know what I'm saying? So it was literally at that moment or around that time that it was just like, I'm not traveling anywhere else until I can travel the way that I want to fucking travel. I'm not going. I can't afford a first class flight. I'm not going. I can't afford a nice fucking hotel with a beautiful fucking view. I'm not going. I'm not doing it. I'm not your fucking budget, budget travel sister. I'm not. I'm not sleeping on a couch. I'm not sleeping on a sofa. I'm not, God forbid, sleeping on the fucking floor. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm not backpacking through any fucking weird. Not happening. Not me. I'm not your girl. Not the person to do that. Sorry, not sorry about it. <laughs> it's not in me. It's not in me. And if it's in you, no big deal. But this is this is me. This is who I am. I'm going to express it. I'm going to be honest about that. So I realized, okay, I want to be able to afford the travel that I want and desire. And guess what? My self-worth the shit that I felt worthy of did not match up with the travel that I desired. So what happened? I stayed my ass in the house is what the fuck happened. <laughs> I stayed my ass in the house. I stayed in the house and I got to work. What, the, what year is it now? What, <laughs> what day is it now? Fall of 2024? 
There has been some travel, but those were moves to Georgia and then an attempted move to New York, which didn't work out for me. And then coming back to California. And then there was like a three day cruise to Mexico for Christmas. That was super impromptu. So it's like, yeah, sure, there's been travel, but it has not been me initiating the travel. It has not been me planning the travel. It has not been me traveling in the way that I want to fucking travel. So why have I not done a lot of travel? It's because I'm very specific about how I want to travel. I'm very specific about how I want to feel. I have requirements. A bitch like me has requirements. Some people call them standards. A bitch like me has standards. You want to be a manifester? You have to have standards. Do you hear what I just said? I made that decision in 2020 that I was only going to fucking travel in style and I have not traveled in four motherfucking years. But do you know what I have done in the years that I have not traveled? I learned about marketing in my business. I learned about manifesting. I learned about how to heal and shift and change my relationship with money. I learned about how to charge more. I learned about how to attract some shit. I learned about how to develop the receiver's mindset. I sure did. So I haven't been sitting at home doing absolutely nothing for four years, but it turns out the lifestyle that I wanted to live, the shit that I want to experience and where my self-worth was, there was a beautiful, wonderful a wonderfully large gap between those two things. So I had to get to work. And at any given moment in time, I could have said, fuck this shit, I'm gonna get a $50 flight to a random place and stay in a shitty hotel just so that I can see something. Not worth it, not worth it. I can see it in my mind's eye. <laughs> Not worth it. I can see it in my mind's eye. I'm not going to Miami if I can't go to the Dior Cafe. I feel like it's a waste of everybody's time. <laughs> and I'm only being a little bit funny. I'm only joking a little bit. I'm mostly being serious. Because I know what the fuck I want. So I show up for it and I commit to creating it. I couldn't travel and spend thousands on plane tickets and hotels when I have taxes to file and taxes to pay and credit scores to build and credit card bills to pay off and things to fucking take care of. I had to learn how to create a sense of financial safety, security and stability for myself. Because I give a fuck about how I feel. Hold on, take it back. What was happening when you were traveling, Natalie? Every single time I went to a new place, I was making money along the way. I didn't start in California with enough money to get my ass to Tennessee or wherever the fuck I was going. I had enough money to get to Arizona, so I got to Arizona. And when I got to Arizona, I went live on YouTube to make money. And I got enough money for gas and I got enough money for food. And I got enough money for my next place to stay. And then I went to New Mexico. And I was there for a couple of days. And then I got enough money for food and then I got enough money for more gas and then I got enough money for my next place to stay. And then I also got enough money for keychain. I do have a keychain collection that I started. And then I went to the next fucking place. One thing after another. And every single time I was freaking the fuck out. Will I have enough money for this? Will I make enough money? What if I go live and nobody wants a reading? What if I go live and it doesn't work? What if I don't make enough money? What if I can't receive? Da -da 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 -da. Freaking the fuck out. And you know, after I did it a couple of times, it got easier. I'm like, okay, I know that I'll be able to keep making the money because I've done this a million fucking times. The universe isn't gonna leave me high and dry. I got this, it'll work out for me, da -da 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 -da. Like that was fine, but it wasn't fun. Because even though I had gotten comfortable around, I know that I can travel and go to the places and make enough money for that. At the same exact time, I had a car note that was like $758 fucking dollars every single goddamn month. <laughs> because I got a car and I paid zero down and it was... <laughs> Oh God, the things that I did not know, but it doesn't even fucking matter because I wanted to travel and it, it literally doesn't even fucking matter because the car was totaled and then paid off except for a portion of it, which I didn't know about until about a year ago when I started focusing on building my fucking credit and I said, what the fuck is this? <laughs> so anyway, 
Um, this is just, you know, intimacy, right? Intimacy between you and me, things that I've been dealing with, things that I've been healing, things that I've been shifting, right? So I was traveling and I knew that I would be making money at some point, right? There was a time where I was traveling and freaking the fuck out. Am I going to make it? Am I going to get it? Is it going to be okay? And then I knew that it was going to be okay. But then not only did I have to make money along the way for the places that I was staying and the food that needed to be eaten and the gas that needed to be there to get me from one place to the other, but I also had a credit card, well, not a, well, yes, credit card bill, but I also had a cell phone bill that had to be paid. And I also had a car note that had to be paid. And so the bills and the fees and the expensive, you see, they're, they're starting to stack up. And so I'm traveling and I'm having a great time. And then in the back of my mind, I'm going, God, how are we going to pay this car off? I need to get this car paid off. And then it was totaled and then basically paid off. So thank you, Lord. <laughs> I didn't, I also didn't want the car. I was driving and I was like, I'm done with this car. I want a luxury car. And that's the reason why I don't have a car today because I decided I'm not traveling unless it's luxury. I'm not buying another car unless it's fucking luxury, period, point blank. And that's why I don't have either of those things at the moment, quote unquote, technically in this physical reality, they are manifesting. They are already mine. They're all showing up. None of that is the point. The point is this. I felt unsafe. You know, those songs from like the fucking 2000s, 2010s and and shit. I knew my rent was going to be late about a month ago. I work my ass off, but I still can't pay it though. But I got just enough to get up in this club. No, no. Pitbull, baby, I love you. Can't fucking relate. What did I learn while I was out there and I was on the road? I learned that a bitch like me can't party if she's not financially stable. A bitch like me can't chill and let loose if her shit is not taken care of. That feeling of instability, that feeling of insecurity, that feeling of having responsibilities that are not taken care of, it, maybe it's the Capricorn moon in me. Maybe it's the fucking Capricorn moon in me. Bitch, I could not live like that. I cannot do that. I can't do that. I can't do, you'll never see me in the club and my rent's not fucking paid. Are you out of your mind? Hell no. I don't like alcohol that much. Love music. I'm good with Spotify. I'll bust it open in the middle of my room, two o'clock in the morning. Never had a problem with that. <laughs> Never had a problem with that. Spending money while my responsibilities aren't taken care of. I learned my lesson never again. So, that's what I had to work on for the past four years, building my foundation. I started with my emotions. I started with my fucking mental. And then, okay, I started with business, building the business, stabilizing the business, learning about the business, how to run the business, how to run the business as a CEO, how to run the business and take action that grows and expands profits instead of running the business like a fucking hobby or running the business like a fucking nonprofit, how to charge money without feeling guilty or like I'm hurting someone or like I'm killing them by receiving money from them for my services, how to value my services. So I was able to have the experience where last year my courses all started at $7 and the course specifically the receiver's mindset was originally how to receive. It was $7 and then I think it was 25 and then I think it was 45 or 47 and then it was 300 and then it was 1700 and then it was just on sale for technically 32% off because I raised the prices to 2000 So then it was on sale for 1360 or 80 depending on if you got the payment plan or not. So I had this course, which has also grown and expanded, but still it was valuable the second I fucking made it. Last year I created this course, The Receiver's Mindset. It sold for seven. And then it either sold for 25 or 45 I don't remember which of those, but it sold for one of those. And then it sold for 300 and then it sold for 1700 and it sold for 13, 60 or 80. And now it's selling for 2000. I don't know the math. I don't know the percentage increase of going from $7 to $2,000 of going from $7 to $1,700. 
it hasn't sold for 2000 yet. The most the course has sold for is 1700 but 2000 is just 300 more. No big deal. Easy peasy. But the point is, I've become the woman who says $2,000 is just 300 more than 1700 No big deal. Easy peasy. Of course I can get this. And not only am I experiencing course sales in my business and money flowing to me in my business, but the women... The caliber of women in my business, the quality of clients has increased because I also worked on that. The kind of women that I want to work with, the kind of women that I want to sell to, the kind of results that I want them to have, right? So it really, we could go on and on and on about this, but what's the most relevant and important part to the story? It's that in 2020, the desire was quote unquote officially born. Now, if you know me, I've been dreaming of luxury and wealth since Rich Girl by Gwen Stefani came out, since Glamorous by Fergie came out. You know what the fuck I'm saying? In the 99, in the early 2000s, I was born in 1999. I've been dreaming of wealth since birth. If we really want to tell the full story. But it was in 2020 when I said, oh no, bitch, I'm not living like this. I'm not living afraid of financial responsibility. I'm not living in lack. I'm not living with not enough. I'm not trying to travel the world and make it look like I have something so that the people on Instagram think that I have something. I don't give a fuck what the bitches on Instagram think that I have. I give a fuck what I know that I have. I give a fuck about how I feel. Period, point blank. I don't give a fuck about flexing. What is that? What the fuck is that? I give a fuck about building generational wealth. I give a fuck about creating something that's actually going to fucking last. There are more important things in the world to me. And it has taken me four years of consistent effort. And even that isn't really telling the full story. Because what? We've been in business for technically six years. Because I first started my business in Etsy in the fall of 2018. So technically, happy six year anniversary, but the business officially started like it was officially created in like fucking April of 2019. That's not the point. The point is I've been working on this shit for years. And the thing that caused me to get up and do the journal work is because I'd like to go to Paris. I would like to go to Paris. And do you know what? When I get to Paris... I'd like to stay in one of the hotels that doesn't have fucking bed bugs. Because I can't do that. I won't do it. <laughs> I won't fucking do it, bitch. No way. Because I care about how I feel. Now we're getting into self-worth. When you don't have self-worth, when you don't care about how you feel, it really doesn't matter if life is shitty right now. It really doesn't matter if I'm unsatisfied today. It really doesn't matter if I look around and I hate everything that I see. It really doesn't matter if I hate my job. I'm not going to commit to putting in effort to create a better situation for myself because it really doesn't matter if I feel like shit at all. It really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how I feel. It doesn't matter if I feel like shit. I always feel like shit. Feeling like shit is normal. You might not be saying it consciously, but if you're not showing up, putting action towards your goals every single day, that's what you're saying. That's what your subconscious is saying. I don't, who gives a fuck how I feel? It doesn't matter how I feel. It doesn't matter that I'm unhappy. It doesn't matter that my needs aren't met. It doesn't matter that I'm not being taken care of. I don't matter. I don't matter. Who am I? I don't mean anything. That's what the fuck is going on in your subconscious mind. So... What's my point? This was supposed to be a really short 2.5. This was supposed to be a 2.5, but then it ended up turning into a fucking story time. But it was a good story time. I enjoyed it. I, those were stories that I really didn't, like I remember them obviously, but I, I didn't, I wasn't planning on it. I wasn't planning on that. I hadn't thought about those things in a long time. So what's the point? Take it all the way back. It's taken me four, five, six years to create more stability, to create more safety and security for myself, to get myself in the position where I'm ready to be ready to be ready to go on the flights and to do the traveling. So you really have to give a fuck about how you feel because it might take you a minute to see the results. 
I sold the receiver's mugs at four three hundred in November or December of last year. And then I changed the price to, I think it was 1600 and then 1700 I don't remember. It might have been 1200 It might have been 1000 Bitch, I don't remember. I, I truly don't remember. But I know I raised the price to 1700 at like the beginning of this year. Could have been February, January, March. And at the time... I'm doing the fucking journal work. I'm showing up for it every single day. I got the $300 course sale relatively easily. Well, yeah, it was like, you know, a couple of weeks of work, whatever. But I, I'm getting the, I got the $300 sale. So I'm like, okay, $1,700, i am ready. I'm doing the fucking journaling. Where's the sales? I'm doing the fucking, I'm doing the fucking work. Where's the sales? I'm talking to my mentor. I'm like having a fucking meltdown. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? It's not working. It's not happening. It's not showing up. Blah, 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 blah. Freaking the fuck out. The receiver's mindset did not sell for $1,700 until like August or, yes, it was August of 2024. I did the mindset work for months before the first $1,700 sale showed up. months and in that moment when the sales weren't coming in when the sales hadn't shown up yet if I did not give a fuck about how I felt then I could have backed down and said okay let me go back to 300 I think I actually did didn't I at some point I, I changed it but it didn't stay there for long. That's why every single time, if you guys are on my email list or whatever, every single time I drop something down to a fucking drastically low price, I'm, and I'm like, you guys need to get on this. I fucking mean, you guys need to get on this. The receiver's mindset was on sale for um, 13 something, whatever, for like a weekend, for like five days, for like a week. And then I was like, fuck that shit. This is way too fucking valuable. Bitch, raise that price back up and add $300 to it and don't piss me off. <laughs> and so the sale was supposed to be longer, but I ended up shortening it because, oh, no, 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 no. I'm going to get paid what the fuck I'm worth. And even then, $2,000 for a course that's going to change your motherfucking life that you will use again and again and again and again and again. Even when you're not going straight into the course material, which you really should always be. Even when you're not going into the course material. You can't unlearn what you've learned. You can't unshift what has already been shifted. Having the receiver's mindset is something that you're going to develop. It's going to be who you are. You're going to be the woman who argues in favor of her desires. So whether or not you're consciously pulling from the course, this shit is being embedded into your belief system. You're welcome. That'll get you a $2,000 bag. It'll get you a $20,000 car. It'll get you a million dollar apartment. Are you understanding me? That's fucking value. $2,000 is nothing for this course. So what's my point? My point is that I was not talking like this when it was selling for $7. That's a reflection of what showing up every single day gets you. But the motivation for showing up every single day is the fact that I really love travel. I really love travel. You might not think it because of the whole, you know, didn't have any money. So I stayed my broke ass at home for four years. It might not look like I love travel, but I fucking love travel. And I love how I feel even more than I love travel. So I refuse to settle. I don't play that game. And I committed to creating a life for myself where I could be taken care of with every single sale that comes in through my business, where I could be satisfied with every single sale that comes through my business and I could live the lifestyle that I want to live. I committed to how I feel. I committed, excuse me, I'm so sorry I burped. I committed to feeling better. Every single time I feel dissatisfied, I bust out that fucking journal and I get to work because I care about how I feel. So when you're a manifester, you have to care about how you feel. Take it back to what we started this conversation with, because we kind of are all over the place. <laughs> it's a really good conversation, but there's a couple things that I really want to make sure that you guys get in here. 
when I was, ooh, no, I want to use this different example, but I have to wrap up the story that I started this with. So I had the friend, she was bringing a fuck ton of drama into my life. That drama was spreading into my life. I cut that friend off. When I got new friends, attracting new people into my life, guess what they brought? Guess what they brought? Drama. Yes, exactly. How am I getting drama brought into my life through my friendships? Is the answer to cut my friend off? No, because that's responding to life. That's not creating. Cutting my friend off years ago didn't fix the problem, did it? No, because if it had fixed the problem, then I wouldn't be experiencing drama through my friends years later or friendships later because it's not just one experience that I've had this. So what's going on? Ah, there's something deeper. Oh, there's something, there's stories that you're telling in your subconscious mind that are attracting this. So when you're the woman who is always responding to life, I'm going to cut this friend off. I'm going to cut this guy off. I'm going to do this. I'm going to leave this job. I'm going to walk away from this. I'm going to do this. That's fine. Cut the people off. You need to cut them off. Quit the jobs that you need to quit. Fire the clients that need to be fired. Fabulous. But if the only thing you're doing is responding to life, cutting the things off, leaving the toxic environments, you're not actually creating shit. You're not actually becoming a vibrational match to a better feeling experience. Because what's happening in your subconscious? What's happening automatically? What's happening on autopilot? The same old unsupportive stories being told again and again and again and again that are going to continue to attract. They're going to continue to create the bullshit until you do something different. That's what I mean, or that's what I meant at the beginning of this call, at the beginning of this call, at the beginning of this episode. You've got to do more then respond to life. So how do you create instead of responding to life? When you step into creation mode, you are now segment intending. You are now prepaving. You are now setting intentions, right? And these are some Abraham Hicks words. She talks about segment intending. She talks about pre-paving energy. This is when you are setting intentions for what's to come. You are preparing yourself energetically. You are preparing yourself emotionally. You are pre-paving the day. So not just the day, but the life and all that good stuff, right? Manifestation, having the receiver's mindset, being the creator of your life is when you're not looking at your life going, oh, this is a fire that I have to put out. Oh, this is a fire that I have to put out. Oh, this is a thing that I have to handle. Oh, this is a thing that I have to take care of. Oh, this is a job that I have to get. Oh, this is a car that I have to buy. Oh, this is a da 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 right? You're not responding to that. You are creating You are deciding what it is that you want to happen. You are deciding what it is that you want to experience. And you are taking yourself there in your mind before anything has occurred. You're not waiting for the new friend to come into your life and bringing a whole bunch of drama before you start seeing yourself with friends who have peace in their life. You're cutting the people off who need to be cut off. And then you're seeing yourself surrounded by people who bring peace and goodness and upliftment into your life. You're leaving the jobs that need to be left. And then you're seeing yourself in an amazing job or you're seeing yourself in an amazing job before you leave the shitty job. You're seeing yourself in the amazing job even while you're sitting behind the fucking desk at the shitty job. 
you're seeing yourself in the amazing job. In between sitting, sitting, sending emails. You're going on a rampage. I love my job. I'm so glad that I have this amazing job. This is the greatest job that I've ever had in my life. I love this environment. I feel so safe in this environment. It's so amazing to be in this environment regardless of what's going on in your physical reality. And then what happens is now your reality gets to shift. So either you attract a better job or your toxic fucking work environment starts to shift. And it's not just going on the rampages, even though that helps. It's also using your physical reality to say, okay, what is this reflecting back to me about my subconscious mind? That's what you're getting inside of the free resource library, inside of that six steps from stuck to self-aware. It's my six step process for identifying any limiting belief. You're looking at what's going on in your physical reality. And you're boiling it down to, oh, these are the stories that I'm telling in my subconscious mind that are creating all of this bullshit. That's why that's so fucking powerful. That's probably the most powerful thing. Well, no, I can't say it's the most powerful thing because everything in there is so fucking good, you guys. But it's, it's one of the most powerful items inside of the free resource library. Because when you want to be the creator, not the responder, you're not the first responder of your life. You're not the firefighter, got to put out fires, always got to put out fires, one thing after another, always something that needs to be taken care of, always, 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 you're no longer that. Let me give you an example, let me give you a different example, hold on, I'm going to pull it up, because I just saved a picture of it too. I just saved this picture, hold on, I'm pulling it up, okay, says, it's a cycle, I get paid some money. Then I try to save some money. Then some bullshit happens that requires money. Then I have no money. Then I get paid some money. Then I try to save some money. Then some bullshit happens that requires money. Then I have no money. And the cycle goes on forever. At some point, you have to pause and stop and say, why is it that there's always some bullshit going on that requires me to spend the money that I am saving? What is the story that I'm telling here? The story that I'm telling here is that there's never enough money for me. The story that I'm telling here is that I'm not financially safe and secure. The story that I'm telling here is that life is sabotaging me. The story that I'm telling here is that if it's not one negative thing, it's another. The story that I'm telling here is that I expect negative bullshit to happen in my life. Non-fucking-stop. The story that I'm telling here is that I can't get ahead financially. And when you become aware of the stories that you're telling, I can't get ahead financially. Life isn't on my side. There's never enough money for me. I can't save. When you become aware of those stories, now you know what the fuck to shift. Now you know what the fuck to change. Because guess what happens when you stop telling the story that there's never enough money for you? And guess what happens when you start telling the story that there's always more than enough money for you instead? Can you guess? Obviously what fucking happens is that there's always more than enough money for you. You get a raise at your job. You stop attracting bullshit experiences. You start making more money. You start getting more clients. You start winning the fucking lottery. It's an unlimited universe. However, the money needs to come to you is going to come to you. You start receiving gifts. You start receiving tips. You break the fucking cycle. You don't break the cycle by responding to life. You don't break the cycle by only trying to change the things in your physical reality. You break the cycle by changing your energy. That is what it means to be the creator of your reality. Are you guys following me? This is really, really important. Because once you've identified those unsupportive stories and you've shifted them, and you start telling a new story, there's always enough money for me. You start telling a new story, my friends bring love and support into my life. You start telling the new story, my friends are a source of stability and inspiration for me. You start telling a new story, 
Now you're segment intending. Now you're setting intentions. Now you're prepaving energy. Now you're creating your reality. Creating your reality happens when you're not responding to life, putting out fires all over the place. You're deciding this is what I'm ready to experience. This is who I'm ready to be. This is what I now choose to believe. This is what I now choose to allow in. This is what I now choose to expect. And when you're thinking those thoughts again and again and again, I choose to expect abundance. I choose to expect money. Money is my friend and my ally. Money shows up for me. Money is my greatest supporter. Money is always there for me. You guys should be writing these down, by the way. When you start telling those stories again and again and again and again, what happens to a thought that we repeat over and over and over again? What happens? Can you tell me, class? <laughs> it becomes a belief. And what is a belief? A belief is a thought that's being told on autopilot by your subconscious mind. And what happens when you have a thought being told on autopilot in your subconscious mind? It becomes a part of your dominant vibration. And what happens when something is a part of your dominant vibration? You attract people, places, things, situations, and circumstances that align with that. Are you understanding me? Are you following me? That's what it means to prepave energy. That's what it means to break out of the cycle of one shitty thing happening after another. You need to be aware, okay, what's causing the shitty shit? What's at the root of the shitty shit? What happened that originally started the shitty shit? And now we got to heal whatever it is that, that that's at the root. We got to shift whatever thoughts are going on at the root. And then once we've shifted, once we've debunked those limiting beliefs, all right, now it's time to tell a new story. Now it's time to tap into a new energy. Now it's time to tap into a new vibe. That's when you do the meditation of seeing yourself receive. That's when you do the meditation for seeing yourself successful. That's when you do the journaling for what life is like in the vibration of your desire. What's life like for you as someone who's always getting the best of the best? That's a journal prompt. What's going on for you in your life as someone that money always shows up for? That's a journal prompt. That's when you start answering those questions. That's when you start building out that supportive belief system. And when you live a life where at least once a day, you're uncovering the thoughts that are going on in your subconscious mind, whether it's by looking around at your reality or answering journal prompts that are designed to help you uncover those limiting beliefs, you uncover those thoughts and then you debunk those fucking thoughts and then you tell that new story. That's it. That's the process. That's how you fucking manifest. And what we spent like 20 fucking minutes of this episode talking about, you've got to give a fuck about how you feel because sometimes it takes six months and sometimes it takes six years because as a natural consequence of your childhood experience, your self-worth is in hell and you're trying to live a life in heaven. It's doable, it's possible, but you gotta give a fuck enough to fight for it. And that doesn't mean that the devils and the demons and nobody wants you to succeed, they don't want you to know this. <laughs> it doesn't fucking mean that. It means it's gonna be challenging to tell a new story every single day. It means there's a commitment that's required. It means there's a consistency that's needed there. And when you give a fuck about how you feel, you take action to feel better. When you give a fuck about how you feel, you take action to feel better. The woman with the receiver's mindset gives a fuck about how she feels, so she takes action to feel better. She uncovers her limiting beliefs, she shifts, she debunks those limiting beliefs, and she tells a new story every single day, no matter how long it fucking takes, and she gets what she wants every single time. And that is how I went from selling a course for $7 to $1,700 fucking dollars in a year. I'm sorry, I think that's pretty fucking remarkable. Who else do you know who could do some shit like that? 
Who else do you know who could do some shit like that? Amen? Well, the answer is probably you, honestly. <laughs> Everybody could do it. Most people aren't doing it. it. It's still amazing that I'm doing it. I'm still amazing. Wonderful. Okay? The receiver's mindset is now open. It's a five-module program. And it's made for the woman who gives a fuck about how she feels. It's made for the woman who is ready and who is committed to actually creating a better feeling life for herself, to actually setting a higher standard of living for herself and actually achieving and receiving her goals. It's the fucking blueprint, baby. It has everything that you need inside of it. It's currently open for enrollment. It's going to close for enrollment on November 3rd of 2024. It will not be open for enrollment again until probably about May of 2025. So if I was you, I would get the fuck in there because you could be a completely different person today versus who you will be in May of 2025 if you get in this program now. You know what I'm saying? That's all that I got for you. I love you. You want to learn more about the course? You want to read testimonials? One woman who literally just got in, like she got in when it was on sale for 32% off. She literally just fucking got in and she emailed me and she's like, I got a job. <laughs> I'm like, what? She emailed me. She got a fucking job, like literally immediately. She's like, yeah, I just did the intention setting and I just started getting into module one and I got a job. My intention was to get a job. Now I have to start over and set a new intention. Like what the fuck? Period. Like this is what happens. This is what I care about. This is my goal. This is my desire. That is my manifestation. I want women creating real change in their lives. I want real results. I don't want a community of women listening to spiritual woo-woo bullshit for years and years and years and years and years and their lives look the exact fucking same. You can't be in my community in 2024 and live in the same life in 2034. We don't do that shit over here. We actually grow, we actually change, we actually heal, we actually elevate, we actually create real life fucking results. Because my goal and my desire is to help you create an emotionally fulfilled, purpose-driven life. You're not experiencing emotional fulfillment if you're not experiencing the manifestations of your dreams. Are you understanding me? So if you feel called to join this round of The Receiver's Mindset, I would love to have you. You can learn more. You can read testimonials. You can get a breakdown of everything that's going on inside of the modules. You can look at your payment options and all of that good stuff by using the link in the description on YouTube or in the show notes, wherever else it is that you're listening. I love you so, so much. Thank you for being here in this community and my world. Thank you for listening. Be sure to rate this shit wherever you are. If you're liking it on YouTube or you're giving it five stars and writing some beautiful notes somewhere else, rate this shit because it's good. <laughs> I love you and I'll talk to you next week.